Well, hi again. We're back for a little bit more writing time. Last week we were talking about uh, writing a narrative, and that's just writing a story, whether, whether it's real or imaginative, either one. And, and um, our standard, remember, says we were talking about what can I write. We've written an opinion. We haven't written information yet, but this time and last time we're writing a story. And this was a real story, something that happened to me that I wanted to tell you about. And so if you recall, we, um, see if I can get it where you can see it. We looked at a map of our story and we started with the beginning. And this was the story about the baby bird. And so I made some notes on this map about what happened. In the beginning, I set up the setting and the characters. I tried to hook you with, or, or hook my readers with um, a beginning statement. And then we added more notes where the middle of the story is for the wow moment or the main action. And then at the end of the story, I wanted to tell you how the problem was solved and end with a feeling. And so, I'm going to be looking at this story mountain while I start writing. So let me come back over here where I can let you see what I'm writing. So that's what one thing good writers do is use a plan to help them say what they need to say. And since I have the plan written up there, it makes it pretty easy for me to take it from the plan to the actual story. We didn't talk a whole lot last time about hooking your readers, but I wanted to mention that to you today, that we want to start somehow by making our readers want to read more. And so I was thinking about, a lot of times I start with a question, but this time I was thinking about the fact that this is the first time I've ever witnessed this thing. And so I kind of wanted to start with that and just say, okay, I'm going to indent, remember, we've talked about that, and just say, not long ago, I witnessed something uh, let's see, something for the very first time. And so what I'm hoping is that my readers will say, hey, what was it that she witnessed for the very first time? And that then they'll want to read more about it. I'm going to see if I can get this closer. Sorry. So you can see it better. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to check out my um, map back here. And it says, I went outside to supervise. Supervise planting a bush. So I thought I could say something like, in the early evening, because that tells you when, I went outside to help, <laughs> I use that term pretty loosely, Um, cause actually what I was doing was supervising. So I might put something on here just to add a little humor. Maybe I went outside to help. Well, actually supervise. My husband planting a bush. Now, when we finish today, I want to talk about some of the strategies that people use when they write a story like this. And humor is one of them. If you can, if you can uh, say something that might make your readers laugh, they would enjoy reading it. So even though it's a real story, we want it to entertain. So we're going to try to add a few things that, that make it entertaining. So I went outside to help, well, actually supervise my husband planting a bush. And immediately we noticed that baby bird. And so that would be the thing I would want to say next. Immediately, we 
we noticed a baby bird uh, sitting on the ground. And sometimes writers also add a little description to make it more interesting to their readers. And so I wanted to tell you a little bit about what this baby bird looks looked like. And so um, I want you to get a picture in your mind of, of what I saw. So this baby was dark gray. and was motionless. So the first time I was thinking about this, I, I started to say um, he wasn't moving at all. But then I thought of the word motionless and I thought that's, I like that word better. And so I used that word instead. This baby was dark gray and was motionless. So we were afraid He was injured. We decided to give him a gentle nudge. Can you see it? Oh, come on down here. We decided to give him a gentle nudge. And I, I really wanted to say, no, we didn't decide. My husband did because I didn't want to touch it at all. Well, he didn't really touch it, but um, just with a, I think he had gloves on or something. But um, we decided to give him a gentle nudge. And now I'm looking back up at my uh, story mountain because I want to make sure I don't forget the details. We decided to give him a gentle nudge, and he began pitching a fit. Now, so far that's just the beginning of the story. I've only used the information that I had up on my story mountain from the very beginning. It's leading up into that wow moment that I talked about last week. But that's all that's all that I've done so far. But I did work on it ahead of time because I knew we wouldn't have time to write the whole thing. So I wanted to show you the rest of the story in its completion. So the very beginning of it is pretty much like what I just said. I wanted to hook my readers. So I said that about, I witnessed something I've only, I said it a little bit differently on here. I said, not long ago, I witnessed something I've only heard about, but have never seen it actually happening. So I wanted my readers at that point to wonder, like I said, what is she talking about? Because I didn't tell them right away what it was that we had witnessed. And then I went on to say, in the early evening, I went outside to supervise, I mean help, my husband plant a bush. Just as we started, Mike and I saw a baby bird sitting on the ground. He was dark gray and was absolutely motionless. We wondered if he was injured, so we, Mike, I was still, still supervising, gave it a gentle nudge to see what the bird would do. We found out very quickly that he was just fine. He started pitching a fit. He was squawking and flapping those baby wings. He even lifted off and flew a few feet. At the same time, Mama Bird swooped down, and she pitched a fit, too. She was not happy with us. While we watched Mama and Baby, guess what? Daddy showed up as well. Daddy was bright red, and Mama was a beautiful golden brown with red feathers on her head, so we knew this was a cardinal family. We've seen cardinals before, but do you know what we saw for the very first time? So again, I'm trying to engage my reader and, and involve them and ask them a question and make them wonder. Mama and Daddy began teaching their baby to fly. Baby sat on the grass for a few minutes. Mama and Daddy hopped close by and then flew up into a tree. They came back and hopped close by again. And, and flew up into a tree again. 
They did this several times, hopping and flying, until finally Baby flapped his wings and flew a few more feet. The little family repeated this process over and over until they finally made it over to the towering trees near my house. We were amazed. I just wondered, how did the baby know to flap his wings? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't get it where you could see it. To make himself fly? This beautiful family left us completely in awe. So, if you notice, the things that I had on the Story Mountain were the things that I used to write my story. And it was pretty easy. Once you get your plan made, it's pretty simple to just put it into sentences on your story. I also wanted to show you, because I started thinking as I was writing, I started thinking about the strategies that I was using that good writers use when they write a story. And so I made a list of those here for you. Sorry, that was loud probably. Strategies in narrative writing. So I have my story mountain with the beginning, the middle at the top of the mountain, and the end. I also wanted to remember that in the beginning of the story, I made sure you knew where we were. We were outside our house. I wanted you to know about the characters that were in that story, the birds and my husband and me. I used a hook for my readers. You can use a question. You can use sometimes a sound word, if that makes sense. I used something to try to entice my readers so they would think, again, what is she talking about? Then it builds up to the middle of the story where that wow moment is and where the problem is. And then the end of the story tells how the problem was solved and you generally share a feeling at the end. Another strategy that I used was I wanted to use transitions. And if you notice, I said things like not long ago in the early evening, just as we started at the same time. And finally, those words tell my readers kind of, a, they give them a sense of organization of how this story is taking place. I tried to use some strong verbs, squawking, flapping, swooped. I tried to use strong adjectives, motionless and gentle. One time I marked out a word because I had written the word big and then I thought surely there's a better word than big when I was talking about the trees. So I said the, the towering trees instead of the big trees. And then good writers use their senses to describe. What do you see? What do you hear? If it makes sense, what do you smell? There's nothing really there in the story that I needed to tell them about smell or taste. I, I didn't really have anything that I wanted to tell you how it felt. But really seeing and hearing, those were the two senses I was trying to, to pull out and make you try to see what I was seeing and hear what I was hearing. So good writers use their senses to describe things that they're writing about so that you can also feel like you were there in a way. So, we have thought of a story we wanted to tell. It was a narrative. It, it was just a real story that had happened. You could do the same thing with a made-up story where you could plan it on a story mountain. See if I can get back to it. Maybe. I don't know. Kind of. There it is. We planned it on a story mountain with beginning, middle, and end. And then we used some of these different strategies to write it into an actual story. So hopefully you are having some time to write some stories. We've also written letters. We've written opinion. Hopefully you're having time to write um, just whatever you feel like writing about. And maybe this will give you an idea of um, what kind of strategies you can use to make your story even better and more enjoyable for people to read. And I will see you another day. Bye.